Hi, I'm Jacob Stein, and I'm a partner in Allianz Los Angeles office, and I am the global chair of Allianz private client practice. We are an international law firm, and our private client practice uh, works on helping individuals and families uh, to protect their assets, to plan their estates, to optimize their tax circumstances, and sometimes just move wealth around the world. We work both with middle-class families who are just looking to hold on to what they have, and with also very, very wealthy individuals engaging in some highly sophisticated planning. I've been doing this for many, many years. I also publish a lot. I lecture a lot. And I'm here to share some of that experience with you. Uh, so in today's reel, we will talk about the intersection of estate planning and asset protection planning. So two fairly separate and distinct goals. In estate planning, our goal is to just arrange our family's affairs, right? To make sure that assets are not subject to probate, to take care of a, an event of incapacity, right? And God forbid something happens to us, make sure that someone can continue to run our affairs, manage our business, take care of our assets, uh, maybe appoint guardians for a minor child, and then of course provide how and when assets will go to our heirs. That's estate planning. Asset protection planning is a very specific set of objectives, which is we would like to protect assets from claims of creditors. Right, so very different to, to estate planning. Um, can asset protection planning be incorporated into estate planning? Of course, uh, we often think of asset protection planning as being a subset of estate planning, sort of a branch of estate planning. Um, and often the two are combined together. So there are a lot of structures that are commonly used in estate planning, especially in estate tax planning, right? Where our goal is to reduce the estate tax that our clients are subject to. And then using those same structures to protect assets from claims of creditors. So if you think of estate tax planning, right, what we are often trying to do is take assets that our client owns and move the assets out of our client's estate. And usually we are moving these assets into an irrevocable trust for the benefit of our client's children. In asset protection planning, we have a very similar objective, right? We want to take assets that our client owns and therefore a plaintiff can reach. And make them into assets that our client does not own, and therefore the plaintiff cannot reach those assets. And often again, we are using structures like an irrevocable trust for the benefit of the kid. So as an example, uh, the types of trusts that are frequently used in estate, plan, estate tax planning, like uh, the intentionally defective grant or trust, the IGIT, uh, the, the GRAD, the grant or retained annuity trust, uh, the, the state income tax planning trust like INGS, the Intentional Non-Grantor Trust, the Spousal Lifetime Access Trust. So I know it's a lot of acronyms, a lot of tax terms, uh, tax terms I should say. Um, but these trusts are very frequently used in the state tax planning. And because these trusts are irrevocable and they are set up for the benefit of a third party, usually the kids, they work as great asset protection tools. For an asset protection trust to have a good asset protection trust, uh, we want a trust that is irrevocable uh, and it contains a spendthrift clause, which most trusts do nowadays. And it is established for the benefit of a third party, meaning someone other than our client, perhaps the client's children. So there is this significant overlap between the state planning and asset protection planning. What you do need to be aware of is that the structure that is most commonly used in estate planning, namely the revocable living trust, right, the family trust, is not used in asset protection planning because when the trust is revocable, there is no asset protection planning benefit to that trust. And very often clients will come to us and say, Jacob, why did my estate planning attorney recommend the living trust to me? It is revocable. It does not protect my assets. Now I'm being sued and I discovered that my trust is not helping me. Why did my attorney not recommend an irrevocable trust? And the quick answer is, I don't know. Maybe they should have, right? But often you have to remember that lawyers may have a bit of a tunnel vision, right? If you go to an estate planning lawyer, you are likely will get an estate planning structure. If you go to an asset protection planning lawyer, you will get an asset protection structure, right? If you go to a corporate lawyer, you're going to get a corporate structure. So you have to keep that in mind that lawyers are so usually focused on their areas of expertise, they just may not be thinking about your other needs. And I think it is very, very important to integrate for many of our clients, asset protection planning into estate planning and it's very possible it should be done. I'm Jacob Stein, and if you have any questions on estate planning or asset protection planning, please reach out. I will be happy to speak to you.
Thanks for listening.